Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here at Bish's RV. Getting this one literally fresh off the apple cart, Mary. I see the stuff come in, I jump on it as quick as I can. Get some updates here on the 261 Rear Bath Delaterra. This is a great couples camping model, but like a lot of people build this floor plane, so why look at the Delaterra version? This is a really good example of what I call smarter class camping, where it's a stick and tin camper. A lot of people look at stick and tins and say, oh, that's entry level. But it includes some up end features that you don't expect to necessarily find in just a stick and tin camper. Like for instance, a little bit taller ceiling, but some other campers do that. It is a totally carpetless floor, even in the slide and no floor vents. That's kind of one of those things you tend to see more in laminated RVs and campers in this class don't usually do that. A heated underbelly, that's starting to really break away from the back. An enclosed water docking center, even a simple one. Uh, a porcelain foot flush stool, a king or true queen bed. All these are some kind of bigger camping features that you can find in plenty of other RVs, but almost never in a, a budget class that is fit for what I call like Larry Lunch Bucket and Jane Six Pack. People who still work for a living, you can get a taste of the good life before you're quite ready for that retirement grade camper without really having to feel like you made too many major sacrifices. Now, when they go uh, above in some areas, they do hold back in a few others. Like I'm not personally a big fan of the fact that they don't enclose the uh, bathroom linen storage in this one. But that's little stuff that you can generally work around for the most part. The big things that are major deal breakers, they do straight from the factory and they do them very, very well here. And that's why Delaterra and really East to West as a whole continues to kind of earn my respect a little bit the more that I get to see them here. So we're gonna go through this in more detail, show you some highs, show you some lows. And I would like you to kind of chime in as we go and let me know what's your favorite feature and what is the one thing you'd change given the opportunity. And if you appreciate the fair way we try to go about this stuff, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Let's get in there. Now, if you start looking through like the RVing fossil records, basically, um, the technical original variant, the, the grandfather of this floor plan is actually from the Palomino Sabre travel trailer series. A lot of people kind of forget that Sabre used to make travel trailers their first two years of production before they became a full-time uh, fifth wheel brand. Um, but w without question, the brand that really deserves credit for popularizing this floor plan concept is the Grand Design uh, Imagine 2600 RB. Just no question there. Since they came out with that thing and it exploded in popularity, there have just been a world of manufacturers who have tried to put their spin on it. But the cool thing about that, when multiple brands all kind of build the same floor plan, it means that you get choice and you get to be picky about what you want and what you like. Now, uh, I think I said right when this video began, this RV does not do everything that every RV possibly could. What this RV does is it gives you uh, some, some big high-end kind of taste of the good life features while still being on a smarter class budget. Like we got that electric space heat and toenail toaster uh, below the entertainment center, but notice how they didn't mount the TV all the way up to the ceiling. Uh, it's it's kind of nice that, you know, this thing can actually... And I'm curious, what is your vote on this? Do you like a factory-installed TV? Or do you like to supply your own TV? Let me know in the comments below. And I, I'd be kind of curious to know your input on that. Because um, I can kind of see benefits both ways. But that's sort of my job. And I get kind of murked up by that from time to time. Now, there's a couple things making this RV look and feel huge. First of all, the fact that it has a taller six foot nine ceiling is something I always welcome because what it's going to mean and what we'll see in a few minutes is I can actually stand up in the shower, this big baby. Uh, it's also light in color and that really helps as well. Now, uh, the, uh, the slide flooring, that is one of those marine woven slide floors. Some people want to say that's still carpet. I personally feel that still qualifies as carpetless, but you know what, to each their own. We, we can, I guess we can debate that in the comments section. Um... The uh, floor is also ventless, you may have noticed, which makes this a very easy cleaning and frankly, very pet friendly camper if uh, that's something you're looking for right there. We're looking at that 12 volt DC compressor fridge. I do believe they are still offering a, uh, a gas electric two-way swaption. But in the meantime, as we head up front, let's start cracking open, taking a look at all the storage. You have yourself a deep pantrytainment center in there that could be very very handy for for storing like a lot of shoes a lot of boots you know obviously a lot of food all kinds of stuff going on in there and you might notice over here in the kitchen great wastebasket space 
Uh, good counter space, although it is kind of some of it shoved up into a corner there, so you have to kind of keep that in mind and budget that. But the nice high-rise, uh, like, removable sprayer faucet, the outlets that are easy to reach, those are fantastic features. You also see that big stainless farm sink in there. And drawers below the dinette. That, again, is something you don't typically find in this class. Like, there's a bunch of little touches that go into these Delaterras that really, like I said, they've, they've earned a lot of respect for me. Because, you know what, you look at a glance, and if you look at the, the build and the structure of this, it's very industry standard. It's just that they've appointed it, I think, very smartly. And one of the areas that I think is a major defining quality is right here. They're the only thing I, th I, can, uh, I, I can think of offhand in this class that has a standard 70 by 80 king bed. It's not a short one. Now, if you want a little more room to walk around the bed, you can option it to a 60 by 80 queen, or you can just sub out, you can just remove that uh, light blue backbreaker death wafer right there, because we all know RV mattresses are just the cat's meow, right? We, we all know that. Well, we know it to be not true anyway. My point is... If you wanted to, uh, like if you were shopping for one of these and you found one that had the king bed like we're looking at, you can always just swap a queen into it. No big deal. Now, because it has that big sliding farm door on the left side of the screen, uh, that means they had to put the TV hookups in a wonky position. But this tends to be a floor plan. I don't see a lot of people really worried about like the nighttime, uh, you know, bedroom entertainment aspects of it. Now... Maybe uh, uh, I've got that wrong. Certainly, I'm not the most uh, well-versed and skilled in the ways of bedroom entertainment, but this conversation is very quickly leading into an HR disaster. So I'm going to do like Ross from Friends, and I'm going to pivot uh, pretty hard here, and we're going to focus back on the living room. Notice you got the big windows through the slide. The slide side windows don't open for airflow. Um... Kind of a bummer there, but everything else will. So, you know, some of these things work pretty nice, or uh, uh, have the airflow function, some of them do not. What I wanted to get up here uh, is to show you that they're including this extra, like, kind of uh, skylight. Now, it doesn't have a power fan in it, but because you are in such close proximity to that light, and because this is a non-laminated walkable roof, you should be able to pretty easily, uh, basically, piggyback power off of one of those light fixtures if you wanted to put a fan in there. So kind of keep that in mind. Now, uh, I, yeah, I, I show, okay, I'm sorry. I, I, I've actually been recording this video over two days because it got too late last night and I lost the outside light. And I forgot that, yes, I did demonstrate the fact that that TV can pivot around. So like, if you climb in the dinette over here where I'm at and you want to watch some TV, you can still, you know, like maybe, uh, uh, you know, watch the Maury Povich show. Is Maury even still on TV? Maury hasn't been on TV for a long time. I am getting old. I am getting old. There's a lot of gray in my beard. My daughter even noticed it the other day. But hey, that's what happens. I'm not worried about it. it it's, that's just nature. Anyway, today we're looking at the big theater seat that is extremely not cuddle compliant with that big, thick storage armrest in the middle. That is a wall hugger, thankfully, so you don't have to wrestle it away from the wall. One of the other uh, options that you have here, though, you can get this with a, I believe, a jackknife uh, bifold storage sofa. And you also have the option of a trifold sleeper sofa. So if you're looking for a little bit more cuddle compliance, it is most definitely uh, available in these. You may have noticed, too, of course, the air conditioner is centralized. But a cool little tip for you when you just get to your destination, if it's extremely hot, one of the cool things you can do is just open all those vents right there and you can drop the vast majority of your air conditioned air down here in your living cavity to cool this down real quick and then close it later to centralize your air to cool off that bathroom in the bedroom you want another handy pro tip um all of these cabinet doors up here if it's screaming hot when you first get to your destination open those for like 10 minutes these are little wooden heat box Dutch ovens, basically. And if you let all the heat out of there and exhaust out of the windows and everything real quick, if that's an, op an option for you, one of the cool things that you can do is uh, cool off the RV very quickly that way because otherwise the cabinets basically sit there acting like a residual heating radiator. And a lot of people don't think about that. Uh, I I'll, I'll be the first to tell you, I did not think of that until one of our handy viewers mentioned that. So you folks have definitely helped make me smarter and, and increase my camp IQ, basically. That window right there, folks, 
That is because of your feedback on these videos. The brand manager for East to West constantly hawks these videos, uh, the Della Terra manager specifically. Anytime I post something, he's always watching the comment section. He actually does reply back to a couple of you, but you didn't even know it. That's what's kind of cool. But you folks said, we want a window in the door. He said, you got a window in the door. It doesn't have a privacy shade, but it is a window in the door, and a privacy shade is a pretty easy thing to apply. Now, like I said, this one's got the baby got back bazooka butt bathroom back here, where you've got the big double vanity up top and a nice chunk of counter space uh, down below. Notice they didn't go like weird with like a double sink. They just gave you one big sink that you can actually get in here and wash adult hands in, and then you've got plenty of counter space. You might have noticed the lighting do a funny thing right there. That's because there's both a switch for wall lighting as well as a motion light in here. Although, you can also just turn that motion light off if that is uh, your preference. Pardon my boot prints in there. That is there because of uh, me doing this handy little demonstration of standing in that nice tall shower. And that's a rectangle shower, not a radius shower. Like I said, really the only nitpick knock I have in this bathroom is that open face storage. So... Owners of RVs that have this open face linen storage in the bathroom, can you do me a favor? Can you chime in the comments and tell me, is it really a problem or is it just kind of me moaning and groaning and griping unnecessarily? Because I could definitely see that being the case. I, I have a way of getting stuck on things sometimes that, uh, don't matter. My my family can confirm that. I go in these little random crew. Why? I'm sorry. I'm on a tangent. I'm, <laughs> I'm rambling. Let's close up the slide. Now, by virtue of the fact that I can start all the way back here in the bathroom and I can get a completely unobstructed bead on the entry door, should be uh, enough of an indication to you that this one is craptastic in its road mode access. I I'm sorry. <laughs> that's uh, that's my silly name for being able to get to the bathroom. Similarly, being able to get up here to the kitchen, to the sink, to the refrigerator, and to a lot of the storage, that is what I call snack-tastic. So, uh... You can uh, stop and have a sandwich. You can um, perform your daily constitutional, as it were, and you need to uh, stop. But this one does not have naptastic travel access unless you're a, a Mr. Stretch Armstrong there and you can squeeze your way through this thing. Because it does not have a second entry door, you will lose access to the bedroom in this one while traveling. But it does mean that you maintain more privacy when you get to your destination, since nobody can just open the door and look at you sleeping. So I'm curious, which is the better way to go? Do you prefer versions of this floor plan with no door into the bedroom, like we're seeing here? Or do you prefer that second door directly into the bedroom for the traveling access? Like, what is the best way for a manufacturer to do this? Now, one of the major talking points I want to hit on, especially as we just step outside here, is towing this RV. Because when you see that empty dry weight, and I think when you see a 26 model number, the concept of half-ton towability really starts creeping into your head, right? And the answer to that is maybe. See, the thing is, this RV has something a lot of RVs lack, and that is a banging cargo carrying capacity this thing has about like over 3,000 pounds of available cargo carrying capacity which is extremely rare in today's market for you know what people might refer to as a common class stick and tin kind of camper but again that's kind of the della terra thing they do a little bit more than uh you know what you n commonly expect from this class like this enclosed uh water docking center that we have over here now it's it's simple but you can see like your your cable dock you can see your solar charge controller for that panel up on the roof i'll get you a look at that in a little bit i'm kind of drawing a blank here early in the morning i'm not yet caffeinated i believe these are just about a 100 watt uh battery solar tender so kind of keep that in mind a little bit right there but what i'm getting at is they give you things like Goodyear tires. They give you things like heavier rated axles for a bigger cargo carrying capacity. But the thing is, that means that legally, you're on the hook to be able to handle that bigger cargo carrying capacity. So this RV's maximum weight uh, of about 9,500 pounds, give or take, I think it's between 95 and 9,600 pounds. That is what you really need to make sure you can handle. And again, I mentioned when you see a 26 model number, a lot of people think, oh, that's a 26 footer. It's not. It's usually about a 26 foot box, 
but then you've got like the tongue and the bumper to kind of factor in there. So usually take that 26 number and add like three and a half to it. And that's a good working figure barometer for you uh, that applies to a lot of RVs. So just kind of keep that in mind a little bit there. So are there some half tons that could handle this? Yes. Is every t half ton going to handle it? No. And it really also depends on where you're camping and how you're camping. Now notice they gave us a full big pass through with big access doors on both sides of the RV. That's really, really nice, especially since you know you have that docking station over there on the, uh, the other side of it. I also like that they gave us the motion lights on both sides of the pass through. Once again, not a feature you necessarily expect to find on a stick and tin level camper. Uh, enclosed underbellies are about a dime a dozen nowadays. But in this class, very few of them are actually forced air heated. Now, that doesn't magically make this some kind of Arctic Four Seasons camper. What it does is it just helps keep everything a little more comfortable, give you a little more protection, a little more peace of mind. Uh, again, Goodyear Endurance Radials. Now, uh, there, there used to just be the Delaterra, but now there's also the Delaterra LE which is uh, basically like a stripped down version of the Delaterras and they have their own separate floor plan. So it's not like you can get this one built that way. I don't wanna uh, confuse the issue. By the way, black tank flush over here. Uh, and, and it seems weird that that's over here on the door side of the RV, but that's like the most direct route to be able to access the black tank. So that makes the flush most effective. And you might've noticed that little uh, sewer sprayer hookup uh, right above that, or, or just, I guess, outside cold utility shower. Remember that blue coily sprayer hose and the garden hose head that we saw in the pass-through over there on the driver's side? That's where that thing could go. Now, um, this is for demonstrational purposes. They have finally started prepping the roof with that little bracket to allow these extension ladders to be able to hook up to that, or telescopic ladder, I believe is the more appropriate term. Um, I, I don't want to confuse the issue again. This RV does not include that ladder from the factory. That's my ladder that I happen to have on hand so that I can do things like get you up to the roof to take a look at things like we're about to do right now. Um, you know what? I segued something off the door side of the RV and I, I, I flat out, I don't remember what it was. I do, I do, oh, I was talking about the LE series and the tires, sorry. Uh, squirrel, anyway. Um, <laughs> So this is a full Delaterra. It has Goodyear's. The LE series does not. So uh, again, there are some differences here. This has a lot of equipment you don't normally find in a stick and tin camper. But again, that's also why it's a little bit longer, maybe a little bit heavier, but again, it gives you that taste of the good life while still potentially being on a working person's budget. That's where this one comes in here. I like that the windows are tinted to keep the nosy neighbors and keep more of the sunshine out. Uh, it is slide awning prepped as well. Obviously you saw I was uh, walking all over that roof up there, but something I'm noticing right now, if I see something, I say something. Uh, for that big time bazooka butt bathroom in the back, you've got your black and gray outlets for the bathroom. If you look just in front of the slide out up here, you might notice that that is where you have your kitchen drains, uh, just a gray tank outlet. So you do have two stage sewer outlet on this one, uh, which a lot of people, that's going to be a bummer. At least it's in front of the slide and not under the slide where you have to go crawling through the dirt to get to it. Um, and that is a very common thing that I see on this floor plan. I think just due to the fact that the kitchen and the bathroom are just far enough apart, they have a hard time kind of getting them to play ball together. But like I said, there's no shortage of people who build a floor plan like this. So I'm gonna leave you some links in the video description where you can check where we have one of these in stock, how much we're asking, and a whole slew of other brands that build models like this. The trick is, most of them are going to be more expensive laminated fancy pants shiny shoes brands. And maybe that's exactly what you're looking for. That's cool, we obviously carry that stuff. But if what you're looking for is something that has those solid features without going all the way neck deep in the price point, that's where this one might come into play. So let me know what you think about it, and until next time, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.